Hey everybody, it's Mr. Wagstaff here. Cool stuff to talk about today. I think you're going to like this. All right, so today we're going to continue to talk about the New England colonies, specifically the Puritans. And they came over here to be this advanced uh, religious group. Uh, and there's going to have some highs and lows with that. And we're going to talk about both of those today uh, as we start talking about the Puritans and the New England colonies in the New World. All right, so... Boop, 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 boop. Specifically, is going to be called the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, John Winthrop is going to be the uh, leader of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. I'm going to show you some maps and get into some stories, but specifically, I need to talk about John Winthrop uh, to start with. He is extremely famous for kind of being the epitome of what these Puritans wanted to be. They wanted to come over here and purify the English church. So while the pilgrims were separatists, meaning they're trying to create a whole different style of church, the, uh, the Puritans wanted to purify the church. So they're not creating their own version of the church. They're just making it better, which... De depending on how you look at it, they would both be separatists since they're trying to be separate from the church in England by making it better, but they would never view themselves as separatists, all right? Never would. Pilgrims would call themselves separatists. Uh, Puritans never would, even though by the definition of separatist, a lot of the rest of the world would call the Puritans separatists as well. But, so... John Winthrop give, gives a, uh, a lot of speeches. His most famous and is very commonly discussed in U.S. history is his City on a Hill speech. He basically says, we're going to come over here, we mean, mean, meaning Puritans, as he's speaking, we're going to come over here, we're going to create this shining light of a society. We're going to show people how we are better than everybody else, how what we're the way we're going to do it is the way God wants it to be done, and we're going to be the shining light of the perfect society around the world. Uh, people are going to look at us like a city up on a hill, like something to uh, try to achieve, to, to want to be like, like trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's what he means by this is going to be a city on a hill. He's not saying we're going to have like a good fortified area on a mountaintop. He's not talking about a physical location, but an ideological one that... The people that come over here are going to create the perfect society. So that is their mentality when they come over. Um, this is a, a map. Yesterday we were talking about the Pilgrims. So this is in the New England colonies. This is far north. So like New York is below this, right? Uh, to show you how far, you know, it's, it's not even on this map below it. Uh, and then further south you'll have Virginia and things like that. So yesterday we were talking about the... Uh, the Plymouth Colony, talking about the Pilgrims and all that, uh, right here. Uh, so this is the Plymouth Colony. So this is all Pilgrims, all right? Uh, this here, like in Boston and in Salem, which we'll talk about, because uh, the famous Salem Witch Trials, uh, which you've probably heard before. If not, we'll talk about it today. Uh, so these are going to be the uh, more of the famous ones. Boston, obviously, is going to be huge. has a deep water port. Uh and these names here are the Indian tribes that live in the area with the uh, Mohicans and, and all that. So when they show up, this is where the Puritans are going to be. The Pilgrims are going to be here. All right. So this whole, even though this is eventually going to be called uh, Massachusetts, both of these colonies will eventually make the state that is present day Massachusetts. This is called Plymouth Colony, which is Plymouth plus all the other little settlements that show up here. And then the Massachusetts Bay Colony is Boston, Salem, and then all the other ones that are going to show up in here as well. All right, so uh, to talk about some of the differences here, the Puritans were a much larger group of English immigrants. So while the Pilgrims are showing up like 100 at a time, there are tons of Puritans that are going to show up comparative to like 100. Uh, they're also middle and upper class, which makes a big difference. Now, that money ain't going to buy nothing really over here, 
but you can buy all your supplies. You can be prepared when you come over here. If you have money, you can still send for stuff over in England. Uh, so the people that are coming over with the Puritans are typically started out wealthier, so they are more prepared to make a society. Not to mention, this is about 10 years after the Pilgrims, so the Puritans already know what to worry about, what not to. Like, hey, how about we not show up in the fall? kind of stuff. So they're going to show up and they're going to establish the Massachusetts Bay Colony, as we just showed you on the map. Uh, and I showed you this when we talked about the pilgrims, that they did want uh, seek to purify the church. Ignore that with the pilgrims. They wanted a whole different thing. Uh, because the ter term Puritans comes from the idea of purifying the church. They're not separatists. They don't call themselves separatists. Uh, they wanted to make the Church of England superior to, like, the garbage it was in England. So, you know, tomato, tomato, whether or not other people would call them separatists. They did not call themselves separatists, however. All right. So, this again, the Massachusetts Bay Colony is here. you got Boston and Salem. All right. And, and we'll talk about Salem today. Uh, and you got Plymouth uh, with Plymouth Rock is the first one. So, here's what is... I should point out, because you've probably never heard of this before, unless you've researched this. Uh, this area right down here, all right, is actually not originally settled by England. It's settled by uh, the Dutch, and it's called the New Netherlands, all right? So, like, New York and all that is actually settled by the Dutch, not the English. And that's not going to last long. Eventually, the Dutch are going to give it up. Uh, we'll, we got a couple stories that we'll talk about. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you a heads up on it. Basically, England's going to fight for it. And the Dutch are going to give it up because England's like, all right, you can either keep your stuff in South America or you can keep your stuff in the New World, uh, like in North America. Which one do you want to uh, keep? The uh, Dutch figured South America would make them more money, so they gave up like New York City, uh, what we, will eventually be New York City. So uh, at the time, the reason, and we'll start talking about this getting inhabited here today, but it was actually owned by the Dutch, not by the English at the time. So, but all this, everything that, that's that's color coded here, all of this is owned by the English at the time. All right. Uh, so, what was the main reason that the Puritans were coming uh, to the New World? think we've discussed it pretty pretty well so answer these in two complete sentences as always pause me if you need to uh to answer those and then we're going to move on all right so puritan life while the puritans want to come over and have this like glorious society it was crazy strict i mean puritan society was notoriously just rough if the Puritans weren't as rough as they were. The Pilgrims, who were a little further south, might seem kind of like fanatics. But by comparison to the Puritans, they're like, nah, we're, we're pretty normal. So church attendance in Puritan life was mandatory. Uh, males dominated everything. You're going to have a hierarchy here. And this is one of the reasons that this mentality, even though it was extreme in Puritan society, in most of the Christian societies that were coming over, English, French, Spanish, in the Christian society, they'd started ranking women as subservient to men. That women's job is to build up the man so he can, you know, do everything else. And a, a woman is subservient. There, there's no real teachings on that, but that's kind of how the religion had, uh, the Christian religion had started going at that time period uh, in history. So women were subservient to men. That was the belief system. Uh, so women had almost no rights and no power. That's going to cause an issue when you deal with Native Americans because Native Americans are like, what? Now, it wasn't like men and women were equal in Native societies, but there was balance. Women did 50% of the work. Men did 50% of the work. Working together with that balance, then you have a functioning society. All the power wasn't given to the men, just like, uh, you know, that would, that would disrupt the balance. So... When the Europeans come over and these devout Christians, and they believe 100% when they show up to the Indians, and they're like, we want to talk to you about Jesus, the Indians were relatively open to the religious concept of Christianity. A lot of uh, the Native Americans are converted to Christianity. One of the bigger problems was the culture change. They're like, yo, if you're a Christian, women, they're subservient now. Men have to do this, women have to do that, 
And trying to change the culture in a lot of Native American tribes is really caused a lot of animosity and really limited the growth the two societies could could achieve together from the from the start. Uh, so uh, church attendance is mandatory. Missing church resulted in a fine. However, in Puritan life, the birth rate is much higher than that in like Virginia and Jamestown uh, because they brought women with them. I mean, obviously, that's why the birth rate is higher. Um, and the literacy rate, right, in New England uh, societies is astronomically higher than any of the other colonies. Obviously, they're super religious, so guess why everybody needed to read? They needed to read the Bible. So uh, the birth rate and literacy rate were much higher than they were in other parts of society. Uh, so the governments... So the pilgrims we talked about, almost like a democracy, Mayflower Compact, elected to office, similar to democracy. Puritans, they did have an election, right? They, they absolutely had an election. If somebody dies that's in charge, they have an election. So they vote. So there is a version of democracy. But they're so keen on having this perfect religious society that they believe that um, society is is run by God. So therefore, when you elect somebody, they're there for life until God decides otherwise, AKA they die. So there was, it wasn't so much a dictatorship, but it was similar to a theocracy where that you, you pick your most religious leader, your, your, your best preacher, your most devout Christian preacher, and he runs everything, but he makes his decisions based on prayer and things like that on what God wants. So, uh, very much a theocracy, with religious foundations uh, in, in, so in society. A uh, common example, like uh, Sharia law that exists in, um, in different parts of the Middle East, this is the Christian version of Sharia law that would exist here with the Puritans. Uh, so the pilgrims, what were their attitudes like? So the pilgrims, oh, they're gentle, tolerant, uh, camaraderie, open-minded. Oh, they just want to give you hugs according to this. That's, that's an exaggeration. By comparison to the Puritans who were super strict, it kind of distorts that. This is an oversimplification of pilgrims. Uh, they'll still go murder some Indians if they need some corn. They will. They didn't do it as often, but the Puritans, superior, uh, superior, as in birth rate. Uh, they believed they were superior. They were a higher social economics class, a higher literacy rate. That's what they mean, not actual superior humans, even though they may have viewed that because they were more godly in their minds. Uh, extremely strict. There's an inflexible. God doesn't compromise. We're not going to compromise. That was the mentality. And extremely authoritarian. All right. Uh, so uh, what were some of the differences between the Puritans than in Jamestown? Again, not the Puritans and the Pilgrims, but explain some differences in the Puritans and what was happening in Jamestown with that, with that first group. So go through here, uh, write two complete sentences, and we will move on. As always, pause me. All right, Puritan rebels. So needless to say, there were people who didn't necessarily like this. So what did they do? Uh, they uh, there's, there's two famous ones here. So Anne Hutchinson, all right, she is going to openly argue against the ways of the church. Uh, she terrifies people, right? Not only is she talking trash about the church in a Puritan society, she, she's not saying like God's bad or Jesus or any question of, of Christianity. She's like, the way you're interpreting it is wrong. The way we're having to do this is wrong. So obviously that's going to work everybody up. Not only that, uh, she is a female, and they're supposed to be subservient to men in this society. A female is standing up calling out the church, so she gets punished as being banished by from the colony by Governor uh, Winthrop. So you're like, she wasn't just beheaded? No. Uh, now, there were all types of physical punishments for, for different things that you could do, but this type of stuff, you would be cast out. There's also, they're not savages, as in like, as, as strict as they are, they they have a rule of law. They have a codification of law. They have a fully functioning modern court system with fair trials for things that happen. So she went through a whole process, regardless of how you murder somebody, you do. There's still a fair process that you go through, and there is a clear cut codification of laws set up in the in these societies to keep crazy 
misjustices from taking place. As a little foreshadowing to the Salem uh, Witch Trials, one of the reasons the Salem Witch Trials are so wild is that should never have happened. Uh, we'll get there. But uh, so Anne Hutchinson, she is banished uh, by being a woman and talking trash about the church. Two things that people just weren't going to tolerate at the time. Not, not a woman and then not somebody talking trash about the church. Uh, so Roger Williams uh, also comes out and he says that, look, the church is awesome, but we should have a separation of church and state and religious freedom. Like if people want to live here and pay taxes, that's fine, but they shouldn't be required to go to the same church everybody else is. This is crazy talk. So they ended up kicking Roger Williams out. Uh, and so he, him and uh, Ann Hutchinson, I believe as well, is going to work with him. And they're going to create a new colony of Rhode Island, which is a tiny, itty bitty little colony up here in the New England um, area. That is, it is a, it is like Puritan light. So they have a lot of the Puritan ideas, but you don't have to follow them. So Rhode Island becomes uh, relatively successful for a while, but it is a, a very, very small colony. And it does not fit in very similar with the other colonies around it. So because of that, it kind of remains small and ends up being our smallest state today because it never really grew because it kind of did. It was just like Puritan light. So either you're a Puritan or you're going to be in the middle colonies, which we'll start talking about later on. The middle colonies uh, were owned by the Dutch and things like that, uh, which were not Puritan. So Puritan light is Rhode Island. Uh, so these are the Puritan rebels. Uh, this is Roger Williams. Uh, he is the guy who talked about separation of church and state. Uh, and then you got Anne Hutchinson, who was a woman and talked trash about the church. Th those are two things in a Puritan society. They were like, no, like you, we can't have you in our society. So uh, this is named two ways in which Anne Hutchinson would have been viewed in a negative way by Puritan communities. Uh, we, we've talked about that pretty, pretty in depth. So answer those. All right, Connecticut. So uh, Thomas Hooker, all right, uh, is a guy who's going to set up Connecticut. Now, if you're like, <laughs> Hooker, uh, hold your giggles for the Civil War unit because we're going to talk about General Hooker and then your giggles, uh, we, we got a whole story for that. But at the time, him being called a Hooker doesn't mean anything. It means his last name probably came from a line of fishers because of fish hooks, all right? So no giggles yet. All right, we talk about Thomas Hooker. Uh, there is an actual story about that name and how it's a, uh, uh, a term for prostitute. Anyway, so no giggles yet. There is a story with that much later on. All right. So uh, Connecticut is right here. All right. So he is going to found Connecticut. Now, what's interesting is this is not part of uh, the English colonies at first. The Dutch will own this and eventually they're going to lose it to England and then it will be an English colony. And so this is Connecticut. All right. So Thomas Hooker creates the uh, fundamental orders of Connecticut. This is interesting because, and this is an actual picture of it, it is an actual constitution. When he creates it, he's like, hey, here's a document. This is what we go by. Every law gets like challenged by this document. This is what our belief system is. Everything that we do has to fit into this document, it has to like follow this document when you can't break it. It is very important to create a society like that. So the Pilgrims and the Puritans, uh, while they had stuff like the Mayflower Compact, which is a version of a constitution and, and codification of laws, uh, really the super fundamental religious people use the Bible as their constitution. So if it didn't violate the Bible, they're good with it. All right. Uh, here in Connecticut, when you make a non- like when religion is not your tent pole for your entire society, then you're going to have things here like uh, a constitution. So what is a constitution and why is it important? Uh, we talked about it pretty well, but we will talk about that it is a, a very, very functioning way to have order and structure in a society. You know what the expectations are inside a society. We have a constitution in America today. We know what you can do and what you can't do. All right, and if you try to create a law that violates that, then they throw that law out because at the end of the day, the Constitution, which like your belief system that is written down when you start, has to stay in line forever. And so you can't have anything that violates the Constitution. So this is just more of the New England colonies all up in this region here. 
All right. Salem Witch Trials. This junk is crazy. So, spoiler alert. In Salem, which is the Salem Witch Trials, these girls start acting crazy. And they start claiming that there is a slave. Because it... Let, let me also th throw, as religious as these people are that live here in the Puritan society, they still had slaves. Uh, and they never have African slaves. The African slave trade is taken off. Uh, so all these colonies are, are going to have slaves. They're not going to have the massive number until we start talking about the southern colonies um, for agriculture, but they'll still have slaves. There's a Caribbean slave named Tatuba who uh, started teaching some of the girls about black magic uh, and all of a sudden these girls start having like seizures and stuff and they start claiming that there's these people in town that are witches that are making them have these seizures and these convulsions. So this is like a fully modern town. Like they believe in rules in structure. That is the entire idea of uh, the Puritan society. Now the rules might be super crazy strict and stuff like that, but there are clear cut rules on what to do in cases like this. Putting them on trial with like fake trials and then turning around and executing them violates everything that the Puritans stand for. Like they have, none of this should have happened. The, they just keep accusing people of being witches and then go execute them for being a witch and then just keep doing it over and over and over. It's baffling by modern society. The reason the Salem Witch Trials... Now, if you go through and listen, learn about some of the things that, that Native Americans did to the colonists, what the colonists did to the Native Americans, and like how torture and stuff happened, uh, the Salem Witch Trials are nowhere... They're not famous because people were executed. That stuff, the most horrific things you can possibly imagine, as, as depraved as the human imagination can happen, is what happens to people... In, in warfare and torture and just horrific stuff, all right? So don't think the Salem Witch Trials are famous uh, because people got executed. That That's not it. People get executed all the time. It was the fact that this level of dumb, I mean, it's not that it's, believing in witches wasn't dumb or anything like that, but uh, it really comes down to the fact that this can happen in a fully modern society with a fully functioning court system that is in place and they just ignore it. It would, it would really honestly be about similar to it happening today. They just start accusing people in, in town of being witches and then they have like a fake court session. They're like, murder them! And they go take them outside and execute them. And then like the next day they just do it again and again and again. And whoever these girls accuse immediately go get executed and they never find witches because there are no witches uh eventually like the governor's like stop what are you doing and they're like yeah what what have we been doing i think it's 20 some yeah 20 people were executed 20 20 they weren't all executed on the same day this took place over months uh it's it's crazy and everybody's like what did we just do this is the reason it's so important. And people always go back and research this. They're like, were there really witches? Is that what happened? Like, th we don't understand it. Very similar to the Holocaust. All right. Now, granted, the Holocaust killed 12 million people, 6 million of which were Jews. But the craziest, horrible thing about the Holocaust, on top of all that, I don't know if you can get worse than that, but it happened in a full on modern elite. Elite is a lot like a, a first world country level society that should never let that happen. Like uh, Adolf Hitler came to power in a democracy. He got voted in. Ish, the Nazi party got voted in. Well, again, talk about that when whenever we get to World War II. But that is the shocking thing about the Holocaust is that that could happen in a modern society when it should never happen. Salem witch trials are the same thing. This happened in a fully modern society. This wasn't a, a fly by the seat of your pants type uh, society. This is a society who values law and order and structure and strictness and authoritar authoritarian uh, outcomes, which means you don't make things up and just do whatever you want. There is a rule for it. And there were an entire set of rules that were designed in case something like this happened that was just not followed. So the Salem Witch Trials is just shows how the fear in humans... Can you can just throw out everything you believe in, 
your constitution. All, fear can absolutely destroy a society. And I think that's getting lost in history on why we're learning about the Salem Witch Trials. Uh, everybody wants to talk about, you know, oh my gosh, can't believe they hanged these people. Those girls were lying. They want to talk about all this other stuff. The real historical lesson that comes from this is when people panic and fear, it doesn't matter what type of order and structure you have. Like, all that can just get thrown out in the most modern societies uh, that exist. Uh, and, and that's unfortunately an ongoing concept that takes place uh, throughout American history and, and, and world history. Uh, so why were people being tried and executed in, in the Salem witch trials? Uh, so kind of, uh, paraphrasing a couple sentences of what we had been talking about. And, and this, they're like girls that, uh, started having seizures. Nobody really understands like what actually happened, but it doesn't matter. There's a lot of like mysteries on earth that don't lead to people just, that's a witch. And then just go hang them in a modern society with a fully functioning court system that just gets ignored. Uh, and nobody stepped in their checks and balances. Never happened. Uh, so yeah, the, the Salem witch trials are, are a mystery as far as what really happened, as far as like what was causing these girls to have these convulsions and things like that. But the historical context of it is, is the real fear is not witches, but it's what humans can abandon, like their entire belief systems when things get bad. All right, that's as far as we're going to get today. I will see you guys tomorrow.